Let's talk about Dravet syndrome. So this is a refractory epilepsy that begins in infancy and is characterized by having multiple seizure types. One important mutation to know is that uh, in about 75% of patients, they will have a genetic mutation in the voltage-gated sodium channel gene, SCN1A. Most of these mutations arrive uh, de novo, but some of them can be familial. A family history of epilepsy or febrile seizures is uh, common to see in these patients. So, uh, they can have pretty much any type of seizure, clonic, myoclonic, atypical absence, tonic, and tonic-clonic, as well as an obtundation status, which is a type of non-convulsive status epilepticus. A typical story might go, uh, someone was born developmentally normal, had a normal exam up till either the first year of age or whenever they first develop their seizures. The first seizure type you see is classically a febrile tonic clonic seizure, and this can be a prolonged seizure or a status epilepticus. Uh, at onset, the a neurologic exam, EEG, and MRI are typically normal, but then after the seizures develop, then they'll start having some developmental delay, cognitive impairment, and multiple seizure types appearing. So the neurologic exam initially is normal, but later on, uh, typically, after one year of age, they'll start developing hypotonia, ataxia, some pyramidal signs, spasticity or hyperreflexia, dysautonomia, tremor, dysarthria, or extra pyramidal signs such as rigidity and dystonia. They'll also start becoming impaired in gross motor skills, fine motor, speech, and cognition, and they may regress as well. So the EEG at onset, uh, awake and sleep EEG, are typically normal. After one year of age, the interictal EEG may start having abnormalities such as generalized spike wave discharges or focal and multifocal spike wave discharges. The ictal EEG normally correlates with the seizure type, and sleep architecture is preserved. So in terms of imaging, the initial MRI uh, at the onset of the disease, it'll typically be normal. And even as people age, the MRI typically remains normal. However, there can be mild atrophy or hippocampal sclerosis in a subset of patients. So diagnosis, it typically arises before 12 months of age. There are recurrent and generalized tonic, clonic, or hemiconvulsive seizures. Myoclonic seizures develop before the age of two years, and that can be followed by obtundation status, atypical absence, and focal seizures. Hyperthermia is commonly a trigger, but there can be other triggers such as photosensitivity. And at the onset of the disease, there's typically normal development, a normal exam, and normal MRI and EEG. A genetic epilepsy panel can confirm the diagnosis. So treatment. The first line medications are valproate and clobazam. These can be used alone or in combination. There are many second line medications, but the important thing to know is that sodium channel blockers cannot be used in this disease. If the first-line medications fail, ketogenic diet can be a good option as it benefits over half of patients. A vagal nerve stimulator uh, can be used as an adjunctive treatment. And for their motor and speech delays, uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy can be helpful. What's the prognosis like? So these Patients are at an increased risk of premature mortality, and it can be from status epilepticus or SUDEP, sudden unexpected death in epilepsy. Uh, 
if they make it to 30 years old, seizure frequency typically reduces after that.